Sarah with House Copper. Today we are going to actually raise a piece of copper. Um, some people call it chasing. I was taught by Bob to call it raising when you raise the sides. Um, so we're going to use this blacksmith's wedge tool here, which um, there's you can buy them at blacksmith supplies. They're just a hunk of cast iron and um, so depending on sometimes what I'm doing with it, I'll put cloth in here so that it doesn't scratch the exterior copper. I don't care in this case. Um, and then we'll be using the blacksmith forge to do the annealing. And so it'll be a, a pat, you know, a, just a pattern of heating with, you know, annealing, hammering, and then when it gets to be too work hardened, then I will put it back in, anneal it again, and keep raising the sides so it's a nice rounded bottom bowl. Um, the, you know, just like blacksmithing, you have to constantly reheat so that you don't end up cracking the metal. Um, and that's what happens with copper too. If it gets too hard from the hammering, too much work hardening, it does, it does start to crack and it doesn't crack in the places like a blacksmithing, uh, experience would have it crack where it kind of the, the slag just starts to flake off and it's chunks you don't want flaked off. This becomes like kinks in the copper that just are weak and you can never get out and they crack or all along the edges it just cracks and so um it's important to just watch your heat and usually honestly for something like this this is 040 so it's really it's quite thick i can't easily bend it so it's very thick um in terms of copper gauge and honestly working with a forge with copper you need this thicker gauge the thinner stuff just crumples almost like you know, not like tissue paper, but it looks like paper crumpled when you're dealing with raising um, aggressively like this. You can do it more gently with that thinner stuff, but not not this ag aggressive process. You do need the thicker copper. So I'm gonna fire up the forge. I'm just gonna put on the ear stuff and show you, and I think it's not gonna take that long, so we should be able to do this video in real time so you can see the entire length of time it takes to actually get the bowl to where it's nice and raised and it looks like a proper copper bowl. All right. I always hate yep. fighting.
that is raising, how I call it, or chasing a bowl. And now I'm gonna let it cool. From here, if you wanted to, you could put it over a mushroom steak like this. And you could hammer, do the cute like little hammer marks and make all those little uh, hammer marks if you want. Um, I don't really know if I wanna do that. I might, but we'll wait for it to cool and then um, and then I can do that. But um, that is the initial bit of, of, of building a bowl from a swedge. You can also do it this with a, uh, like a, a wood block, though I think the wood would char. And, um, but when I do do raising without the heating, a wood block like hollowed out like that works just as fine. So um, there it is, how to chase some thick copper into a bowl. Um, so, um, don't forget to, um, like subscribe, tell everybody, find me on Facebook and Instagram at house copper, pick up copper, iron, and clay wherever books are sold. Um, and if you have any thoughts, questions, I'm sure a ton of you do a ton of blacksmithing and you're going to have a whole bunch of ideas. So please share them for everybody who reads the comments. Um, and I know I'm slow, but I will respond uh, to any of those comments as well. Um, all right. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.